Okay, so this is the point in the game where the player, after a couple of rounds, using the grum, the grum buggy and the chieftain uh, drummonaut combo, would be switching to this, playing the laugh ward. Playing the Schuler, the Amber Imp, and the Tesmo. Basically, closing his turn. So, um, Let's move to our analysis and bear with me. The, um, the cluster has ticked a little bit because there was a judge question, but we're exactly in the same situation. And it's on the right player to play. Holding on to the poltergeist was, was a definitely really interesting, uh, interesting move. He, he was waiting for uh, the right moment to play it. The sigil of evasion is probably the, the artifact he's waiting for. So let's have a look at the board and what the problem is. So you still you have the Tesmo that's just been put here and also the Amber Imp that potentially is a problem as well for the reaping. And you still have in play the Chieftain Dremonaut combo as well as a Gauntlet of Commands that can provide some uh, potential attacks and problems uh, into the, the Mars board. On the other hand, you also have the, the life wall that could also very much slow down the play of the mass player. So, so let's look at what actually uh, the mass player did. He removed the stun from the dominator, attack uh, the, uh, the ember imp with the SS spider, breaking the elusive and killing it with mega mouth. Then he could reap freely with his clear bolter, killing and purging the German note, and with a marauder reaping for an extra ember and trying to catch up with the game. This, this play has a number of problems because you're not completely taking care of the different threats we've mentioned in the board. If you maintain the uh, this board, here's what can happen. Rip with Tesmal, rip with Ember Imp, rip with Shuler, and basically lock the player out of Mars. If you don't take care of the uh, Brobnar board, Brobnar can simply attack, kill the Dominator, and expose the Earth Spider, which could be uh, uh, start being attacked with a gauntlet of commands. Well, I mean, so this is problematic. If you don't, exactly. If you don't take care of the Brobnar board, the Brobnar creatures can attack and kill the Dominator, and then the gauntlet of command can be used to start putting damage on the spider. The proposed option for uh, for a better play for me is the following. Break the elusives with the bolter and the spider of the two imps. But also using the Ixilo bolter's power to um, kill and purge the Dremonaut. Then the last two mass creatures take care of the imps. As a result, we've removed the two main threats, which are the Tesmo and the Dremonaut, and also taken care of the Ember Imp, which could prevent further reaping. Um, there, there's a small variation. I mean, you could probably break the Isusive with a Marauder and attack and kill the Imp with the Bolter. Uh, I, I think it's a minor difference. The result is you have one extra mass creature in play and 
where you can still use the put uh, some ember on the marauder with the skeleton key and further improve its strength but as a result of this approach you kill the dremenote and you prevent very much um, an efficient play against the spider on the next turn but also you're able really to make a uh, a this turn much much weaker and as a result the Ixili dominator is not completely uh, protected still he could be attacked by the shula and the chieftain uh, in a Brobno turn but you are definitely in a position where if he does that he will harm his board very very much and giving you a chance to to go ahead and to have gotten rid of most of the creatures so that, these are my two cents and, and i hope this was helpful what happened in that game is uh, is not what, what, what i'm recommending here uh, having left tesmal in play enabled uh, the other player to uh, lock uh, the player, the mouse player, out of uh, out of mouse for many many turns, and as a result, uh, couldn't really catch up with this uh, delay on uh, on Ember. Uh, it was my two cents, and once again, definitely not criticizing the players who uh, who played there, but rather try to understand how we can make some variations in play based on what's available on the field and based on what we can observe. Thanks very much.